Yeah. Okay. Are we going? <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. So we're beginning, everybody. Here we go. Back. We're in Matthew 25. So we. I'm not going to go back through Matthew 24. We just did that. Matthew 25. Here we go. <coughs> this is fun. I like the ten virgins. The parable of the ten virgins. It's awesome. One of my favorite, 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 favorite sections of Scripture. If I haven't said it, it's my favorite, one of them. One of my favorites. Did I tell you it's one of my favorites? Mm. Yeah. Do you happen to like this? What are we talking about? Uh, then, like this one? Oh, okay. then, what's the then, then? Remember we said the then we got to figure out? Antecedent to then, what's then? The then, we were just talking about prior to that, who is the faithful servant whom his Lord finds ruled over his house to give him meat in due season, blesses that servant when his mat, when the Lord comes and finds him doing it. That's the then we're talking about. Then, when the Master comes. Then, when Jesus comes. Then, it's not the time that is the sign of the coming. The then is Jesus coming. Then, we will find out later on, is also known as the day of the Lord. Maybe even here in just a minute. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet. There's the word meet. Meet. Beautiful word, meet. Meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise ones took their vessels of oil with their lamps. When the bride, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. There's that word again. Go you out to meet him. Then those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, not so, lest there be not enough for us and for you. But go ye rather to those that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. They that were ready went in with the bridegroom to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also other the, the came the other virgins also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say to you, I don't know you. Watch therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Okay, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. <coughs> Roll up the sleeves and get ready to go. Here we go. The ten virgins, right? Five were wise, five were foolish. So these were people who were responsible for taking care of the working on the celebratory aspect of the marriage. They were ones, individuals that had not yet been married themselves. They were there just simply to wait on the bridegroom. Five were wise, five were foolish. What made the wise ones wise? Let's start with that. What made the wise virgins wise? What was the word you just said? Prepared. prepared. There's that word. Somebody in Edmond, Oklahoma used the word prepared. And it just made my heart happy. <laughs> I said in Edmond. <laughs> so, prepared. Oh, your light's not on. Prepared. So, prepared is the word of the hour. Prepared. Prepared, prepared, prepared. Five were prepared. The five who were prepared brought oil in their lamp and oil in their vessel to fill up their lamp. Because why? Why would you do that? Why would you bring oil for your lamp? You come with a lamp filled with oil, you light it, you sit it on the table, and it's lighting up the room. Why would you bring additional oil for your lamp? But why would you need to if the bridegroom's coming? He said you would bring it to refill. And I'm like, well, why do you need to refill your lamp if you know the bridegroom's coming? It takes how long? If you don't know when. What's that? It takes a while. Yeah, it takes a while. I don't know how long. You don't know when. That's exactly it. 
So, the five wise ones were the ones who didn't assume that they were in control. They didn't assume that they knew what the bridegroom's plans were. They said, I don't have any idea. It could be who knows how long. I'm going to be responsible. I do not want my lamp to be out when the bridegroom comes. I'm going to do whatever I need to to make certain that my lamp is filled and that I have the ability to refill my lamp as often as I need to until the bridegroom comes. I think the inference here is that the wise bridesmaids, or the wise virgins, I should say, the wise virgins likely brought enough oil to get them through the night. I think the reason they brought extra was to make certain they had enough until morning. And so, I mean, it's just, it would make common sense to me. If I was going to take oil, and I didn't know when the bridegroom was coming, and I wanted to make sure my lamp was lit, I would guess, how much oil do I need to keep my lamp burning until the bridegroom shows up, if he doesn't show up until morning, right? The ones who didn't were the unwise ones. They didn't plan ahead. They were not prepared, prepared right? And so, what happens? The bridegroom tarried. They all slumbered and slept. Did the wise virgins sleep? They did. They all slept. So sleeping was not a sin. In this parable, the, the aspect... <laughs> Scott's over here laughing at me. The reason I said that is because we can say, well, this, they were slothful. They should have stayed up and waited for the bridegroom. But no, that's not, what this, that's not what this parable is saying. This parable is saying life happened as normal. Nobody knew when the bridegroom was coming. They all got tired, and they're like, you know what? Someone's going to watch. We're all going to catch some Z's. When that person says the bridegroom's coming, then we're going to get up. So let's all go to bed. We don't know when he's going to show up. So they all laid down to sleep. They all slept. And the scripture says that they were still wise, even though they slept. So the act of sleeping wasn't the issue. They slept, and at midnight, verse 6, at midnight there was a cry... Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go out and meet him. And those that were prepared went to meet the bridegroom. They went with him into the wedding and the door was shut. And nobody else got in after that. That was it. You don't make it in on the first try, you don't get in. So, pretty simple parable. For me, there is basic value in that parable in the sense that we know we're supposed to be prepared. We should not give up watching for Jesus' return. We should, be, we should prepare our hearts, prepare our lives, do what we're supposed to do to be the good steward and not the evil steward, to do whatever the Lord's put in our lives that we're responsible for and be faithful with that to the day that He comes back or until the day that we come to Him, if we die before He shows up, right? The thing here that I think is interesting is that this undergirds that, supports that, but it's the word meat that I want to focus on for a little bit. So the word meat is the word apantasis, and it's only used six times in the New Testament. <coughs> it's used in Matthew 25, it's used in Acts 28, and it's used in 1 Thessalonians. So, let's go look at Acts 28. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, the fifth book of the New Testament, Acts 28. So it's just four, it's four books ahead. Give or take about 120 pages. Maybe 160 in my life. <laughs> okay, so story behind Acts 28. Here we have Paul, the apostle. Paul, the apostle, is in trouble. He ends up sharing his life story with King Agrippa, Queen Bernice, ultimately ends up appealing to Caesar. The famous line, you have appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you shall go, is spoken. Paul heads off out of Jerusalem on his way to see Caesar 